Hi, welcome to my show. I'm Trisha, your nutritionist for our time together. Today we'll be talking about global factors of longevity. So we'll be talking about 10 factors that can help you to live a long life full of energy and vitality. I teach healthy aging for Northeastern University. So I've looked at several areas of longevity across the world and I want to share what threads its way through all these areas of longevity and that's these longevity factors. So we'll be talking about areas known as the blue zones in these blue zones books and then we'll also be talking of areas of longevity that are in this book right here, Healthy at 100. So these areas all together, they're across the world and the first one is in Loma Linda, California, and I had the opportunity to be out there just a few months back. Now, the second area of longevity is the Nicoyan Peninsula in Costa Rica, and then we have Vilcabamba, which is in Ecuador. And then moving over across the Atlantic, we have the Mediterranean region. You've probably heard of that as an area of longevity, but then we also have Abkhazia, which is in the former Soviet Union. Then we have Hansa, which is in northern Pakistan, followed by Okinawa, which is a series of islands off of the southwest coast of Japan. So let's start with the first longevity factor. And this is eat lots of vegetables, and when steaming or boiling, consume the leftover water. So one of the cheap things that you can buy that can really help you add years to your life if it's going to make you eat more vegetables is a steamer basket. And what you do with the steamer basket, you drop it in a pot and you fill it with your vegetables and then you fill the water up just about a little bit below here. And then when you're done cooking your vegetables, that water can be your vegetable tea that you end your meal with. And this is what they do in Hamza, in that northern area of Pakistan. They drink the reserve of that water because that's filled with nutrients. So a nutrient-rich broth. Now, another thing that you can do, and this is what they do in Abkhazia, is that they have salad for breakfast. Imagine that. So salad for breakfast helps you to get in vegetables not only at lunch and dinner, but now at breakfast too. Now if you're not getting vegetables at both lunch and dinner, this is something we want to work on. And then think about getting them in at breakfast time. A salad is a great way to do that. In Okinawa, what they do is they have soup with vegetables sometimes for breakfast. So that's just another way that we can help to get more vegetables in, in the diet. And a little later today, we're going to show you how to make a smoothie, and you can add spinach to that recipe as well to just add spinach and add greens to your smoothie that you might have in, in the morning. Now, when we look at, we move along and talk at longevity factor number two, this is eat a rainbow array of fruits and vegetables and eat them locally and in season when possible. So this means that we have to shop for a rainbow when we go to the supermarket. Look for lots of colors in the produce that you buy. And this will help you get in a lot of phytochemicals, which are plant chemicals that help you have a very healthy body and mind. Now, if you think about what's in season in the New England area, well, the first thing that we see seasonally is usually in spring, we see asparagus that's locally grown, and then June, we start seeing fabulous strawberries. And then over the summer, we see lots of different fruits and vegetables and greens. And then in the fall, we have that beautiful harvest that the pilgrims made famous many years ago. So we want to think about eating locally when, when we can and seasonally when we can. Some of the longevity areas are located in warmer climates, but not all of them. Hunza has four seasons, so I really like that because that means that wherever we live, we can live long lives if we practice the factors that we're going to talk about today. So even though in the dead of winter we don't have locally grown produce, unless you find there are some greenhouses around, but it's great that we're able to get produce um, pulled into the supermarket from areas all across the world. And in our country, we get a lot from Florida and from, from California, which is really nice. The third longevity factor is consume small amounts of nuts and seeds throughout the day. 
We see this a lot in the longevity reasons and, uh, regions. And in fact, in Abkhazia, that's you know, one of their forms of main forms of protein is getting in a lot of nuts. So how can we get more nuts in? Well, I like the Emerald brand because they now have nuts in portion controlled packs. And these are 100 calorie packs of almonds. They also have almonds and walnuts in the little packs. And what's nice about having them in a little pack is that you can have a snack, it's just 100 calories, and you keep your portion small. Because one of the things about nuts, they are good, but if you eat too many, the calories can add up really fast. But we do want to get them in the diet. They help to lower the cholesterol, and they help us to live a longer life as well. They are associated with longevity, so more nuts in the diet is a really great idea. Now, another place I like to go for nuts, Trader Joe's. I find that they have the best quality nuts at the lowest price. So you might want to visit there. What's the best nut? Well, there is no best nut. They're all good. So peanuts happen to be higher in niacin than, than other nuts. And almonds happen to be higher in calcium than other nuts. And walnuts have um, more omega-3 than some other nuts. But flaxseed also has omega-3 fats, which are great fats that are anti-inflammatory. So you can see that different nuts have different nutrients and they're all good for us. So it's good to get a variety in. You have a built-in measuring device for nuts and that's your knuckle. So I'm just gonna show you a little, little tip here. So when we open the package of nuts, oh, it's not opening for me. There we go. So in your knuckles right here, you can fit about six almonds. And six almonds, six almonds, that is about 45 calories. So if you did 12 almonds, that's about 90, it gets you to about 90 calories. So depending on what your calorie budget in for, is for the day, you know that whatever you can fit right in your knuckles, that's about 45 calories. Now a handful would be about four of those. And that you're talking about depending on the nut, between 180 to 200 calories for about a handful, unless you have a huge hand. Um, but in general, this can be really, really helpful to know. So it's really small amounts. And you'd be surprised at how filling nuts can be, just six nuts or 12 or 100 calorie pack. I find that it's much more filling than grabbing for other midday snacks. Someone might go to a candy machine and grab candy, but the nuts are actually really, really filling. And you know, they also go nice with the small piece of fruit too. That's a really ideal snack to be, to be thinking about. All right, so other ways that we can get nuts in is that we can have nut butters. So almond butter, peanut butter. So I have peanut butter here, and then I have some almond butter here that we're gonna use in the smoothie in a, in a little bit. There's also cashew butter, and if you go to Whole Foods, you can find pecan butter, walnut butter. There's all kinds of nut and seed butters that are out there, so I highly recommend that you give them a try. Now, sesame seed, sesame tahini is sesame seeds that are crushed up, and that you can put in a salad dressing. You can also um, use that as a spread, So, and that's in hummus as well. So it's just another way to get nuts and seeds into into your diet. All right, so let's, oh, one more little quick tip that I wanna give is when you buy natural nut butter, you wanna get the type, it often will have a layer of oil at the top, and what you wanna do is, before you're going to use it, put it in the cabinet overnight, and the oil will distribute evenly, and then the next day, when you're about to use it, then you flip it over, open it up, use it and then keep it in the refrigerator. I keep my nuts and seeds and nut butters in the refrigerator. And you wanna buy more natural nut butters. So when we look in the label, there's one ingredient, peanuts. When you look in the other national brands, there's a lot of other unsavory ingredients. So we wanna go with more natural nut butters. This happens to be from Trader Joe's. If you're in New England, the Teddy's brand is a really nice brand um, as well that, that we have out here. This happens to be a, a Trader Joe's almond butter, but there are other almond butters, other national brands and cashew butters that are out there as well. But look for it to have a very small number of ingredients. I really like one ingredient foods and one ingredient nut butter. So try to avoid some of those national brands, again, that have that long list. The other thing I wanna mention, when you buy nuts, it's good to buy them raw or dry roasted. When they start to roast them in various oils, it, they can use really junky oils. So it's something that you want to think of um, moving away from. All 
right, so let's talk about, we're going to move on and talk about longevity factor number four, which is limiting your meat consumption. So you want to think about how much red meat are you eating and can we cut back? So red meat is associated with heart disease, cancer, and increased mortality. So literally, red meat shortens the lifespan. What is red meat? Well, you might say, oh, you know, that's hamburger. Well, it's pork, beef, and lamb. Yes, pork too. And you heard it was the other white meat. No, no, no. The people that say that should go to nutrition jail and win a marketing award um, because it's really a red meat. So be careful with pork, beef, and lamb. We want to limit those in the diet. And we actually want to start thinking about replacing them with more beans in the diet. Kidney beans, cannellini beans, lentil beans, more beans in the diet, that's, you're, that's associated with longevity. So really important to think about. All right, so one of the studies that came out from the Harvard School of Public Health in 2012, what they found is that one daily serving of unprocessed red meat, about the size of a deck of cards or the palm of your hand, that was associated with a 13% increased risk of mortality and one daily serving of processed red meat, like a hot dog, two slices of bacon, that was associated with a 20% increased risk of mortality. That's dying, very scary stuff. So we really want to limit the red meat so that we can live longer lives. And when you look at these areas of longevity that we spoke about, you don't see them eating a lot of red meat. Um, the Okinawans, for instance, you know, primarily more of a vegetarian type of diet, they do have pork once in a while, and it's generally on special occasions. So we want to think about really limiting that red meat, more beans in the diet, and then fish in the diet, more fish. So more fish would be a really great, great idea. Why is that? Well, fish have omega-3s. So you want to think about salmon, sardines, anchovies, bluefish. So all fish and seafood have some omega-3s, but some happen to be higher than others. And we want to think about getting more fish in the diet and getting away from, from the red meat. The omega-3s are associated with decreasing inflammation in the body, decreasing heart disease. So really a great idea to get more fish into the diet. Now, longevity factor number five is decreased processed food consumption and try fruit when craving something sweet. So think about the processed food that you might be eating. Look at your labels. If it has more than a few ingredients, can we switch that out? Can we decrease that in the diet and start reaching for things like a banana when we're craving something sweet or maybe making a smoothie, enjoying fruit so that we can really decrease the sugar that's in our, in our diet. We also want to think about limiting crackers in the diet. I teach a lot of people, I do employee wellness across Massachusetts, and I go into a lot of workplaces, and I hear the stories a lot. People are tired at night, and they're having crackers or cereal for dinner. We really want to move away from that, and we want to try to do some planning so that we can plan in some days where we cook, and we cook in batches so that there's leftover food for the next few days. I know it's hard to, to cook when you're, when you're working each night, but if we really plan well, we can get really healthy food in so that we're not eating cereal or crackers and cheese or picking for, for a meal. So think about you know, when you shop for that rainbow, think about you know, what days will I do my shopping, what days will I do my cooking. So one thing I found helpful for the people to do is to have a plan such as a planning day Sunday might be your planning day, and Sunday you say, well, I'm going to do my shopping on Monday, and I'm going to do my cooking on Tuesday, and then I'll eat leftovers on Wednesday and Thursday, and then Friday will be another cooking day. So that can be really helpful to think about having a, having a plan. And while you're planning your shopping and your cooking, also planning into your calendar, your exercise can be really helpful as well. Now, when we decrease the processed food in the diet, it helps us to decrease the salt and the sugar. Salt is associated with high blood pressure, and so is sugar. And the doctors sometimes don't tell you that, but it is. It's associated with higher blood pressure, higher triglycerides, 
associated with diabetes and gout and the metabolic syndrome. So we really want to decrease sugar in the diet. And of course, also associated with obesity. And I do see a lot of people, um, especially over the years, that have given up the sugar and limited the processed food and the weight comes off. So it can be really helpful with weight management to decrease the processed foods in the diet. Plus it can make you feel a lot better too. So we look at the oatmeal that I have over here. And when you look in the label, it's just oats. So it's a one ingredient food, whole grain rolled oats. And this is the old fashioned oatmeal. So that's what we're looking for. Like I mentioned with the nuts and the, and the nut butter, just one ingredient types of foods. Now this happens to be, these happen to be mulberries, which are from Hunza. And again, you know, you look at the label and what, what are we eating? Well, it's mulberries. And mulberries are local to Hunza. And as I mentioned before, in the longevity regions, we can get a lot of those foods right in our country. Um, and you can get the mulberries. Mulberries are, um, they're native to, um, to Hunza. You can also find them in, in Turkey. And I'm going to show you what they look like. These are fun to put in a trail mix. They kind of taste like a raisin, maybe a little bit of a mild, milder taste, not as sweet. But they're really fun to eat. And they do eat these in Hans as a snack. But again, most of the other foods that they eat in these areas of longevity, we have available readily here. Uh, but these are the mulberries. They might be something fun for you to, to give a try to. This brand happens to be um, Navitas Naturals. So that's something you could also buy online as well. Uh, but you want to give mulberries a try. Really fun, fun food to, to eat. Now, num longevity factor number six is stay active and move your body regularly. What I see in the longevity regions, I see a lot of low impact exercise and it seems to be just organic with what, what they're doing. It's not always structured exercise. In Japan, what's nice, they have a radio fitness program. So they actually do some interesting exercises through their radio fitness program. But we see things like Tai Chi in Asian countries. That's really big. And Tai Chi, what's lovely, in senior centers in our country, Tai Chi is offered in many, many senior centers. And also if you find martial arts studios, that's where you can find Tai Chi and a lot of YMCAs. It's a really lovely, lovely way to move your body. Now, another thing that we see in the longevity areas is that people are pruning trees, they're, they're walking and taking care of sheep and, and goats, they are climbing trees to pick fruit, they're gardening, so with gardening you're, you're pulling, you're digging, you're really working your muscles there. So it's just something to think about, you know, how much, how much are you connecting with nature and what can you do physically that connects with nature? Um, you know, outside of structured exercise time, connecting with nature is a really great way to, to feel good and, and to move your body. So what are some other low impact things that you can do? How about dancing? How about trying belly dance? So in the cultures of longevity, in many of them, dance is really important to, to the various cultures. So that might be something to, to try as well. And walking is one of the best exercises because you can just get out there, take a nice walk, one of my takeaways from Vilcabamba and looking at that region, and again, that's in Ecuador, is that they have a saying, and I love their saying. Their saying is that we have two doctors, our left leg and our right leg. And you think when we walk, it's just so important that that can help us to live longer. So use your legs and, and keep walking and always be open to trying different forms of exercise. There's so many different fun things that we might not even know if we like that are out there. One website that I love is active.com. And what you have on there is various races. You can put your town in there and you can get to see all the 5Ks, the 10Ks, the half marathons that might be in your area over the next few months. And that can be really motivating. So maybe you say, you know what, I'm gonna train for a 5K or a 10K several months from now. So give active.com a try. Another thing that's really wonderful especially in our state of Massachusetts, bike trails. Bike trails are really amazing to ride on. I have a few favorite ones in the state, and one of them is the Cape Cod Rail Trail. It's a paved trail. It's really beautiful. 
And then you have the Minuteman bike trail, which isn't far from Acton TV. That's a, a fun trail to ride on. That's also a paved trail. It goes right through Lexington Town, so you can stop there in Arlington to get a bite to eat and to also look at his, some historical sites. So we want to think about giving maybe biking a new try. If we haven't biked in a while, maybe biking on a trail might be a fun thing to do. So think about what activity would you like to try over the next few months? Now, I wanted to just chat a little bit about seniors and who the oldest living elder was and what year they lived to. Can you guess? Do you know what the oldest living human, what age they lived to? Well, it's actually 122 years of age, and that's Jean Calment of France. And I've been tracking the oldest living people over the years. And one site that's kind of fun to do this on, and I actually found it for this to be credible, is Wikipedia. They track the oldest living people, and I always cross-check it with articles and newspapers from around the world. Currently, the oldest living person lives in Jamaica, and her name is Violet Brown. She's 117 years of age. Can you imagine? So what Violet likes to eat, she likes fish, and she likes to eat sweet potatoes and Irish potatoes, fruit, especially oranges and mangoes. And one of the things she mentions is that she does not eat pork or chicken. Kind of interesting. And she's a devout Christian. So I like to look at the oldest living people over time. Prior to her, the oldest living person was Emma Morano, who lived 117 as well. And she was from Italy. And after 100 years of age, one of her longevity factors that she said was thinking positively about the future. Can you imagine being over 100 and you're still thinking positively about the future? That's really amazing to me. Now, longevity factor number seven is stay connected to family and friends. What we see in areas of longevity and Abkhazia comes to mind is that we see generations living together. And I often find in our culture when people say, oh, my in-laws live with us or my kids live with us, they almost say it and they don't want to talk about it or they don't want to admit it, but that it's a wonderful thing when generations live with each other because it's a longevity factor and the generations help each other. So maybe the grandparents or the grandparents can help out with, with the children. So it's really a you know, really nice thing. But in our culture, kids tend to go away for college and then oftentimes they they move away. They might get a job that's further away. So then what can we do if our family is far away from us? Well, volunteering can be really helpful to get and stay connected with, with people. Now, uh, one senior center that, that I've been working at, there's a lovely senior there, and she volunteers at a nursing home. Nursing homes always need volunteers. You can spend time with the patients there, and, and they love that, and it feels good to volunteer. So keep that in mind. Other great places to volunteer, senior centers. What about animal shelters? So these places need volunteers and volunteering is a really great way to feel good, to give back, but also to stay connected with other people and to meet other people. And I also wanted to mention senior centers because seniors often can get isolated as they age and that isolation, isolation can lead to depression. And one of the things they can do is go to senior centers now, if you've never been to one, these places are thriving. They are wonderful, happy places to go. They have either free or discounted meals. They have very low cost exercise classes. They have other classes that just really challenge your mind where you learn new things. When I was out in Loma Linda, California, they had a ukulele class. That was really big out there. That was really fun to watch. I enjoyed that. But I see all kinds of classes when I visit the senior centers out here. And then they go on field trips. They have dances. It's a great place to go to when you retire to meet other seniors and to stay really active and to do things that will keep you living a long life. And one is challenging the mind and reading, doing crossword puzzles, and learning new things. So keep that in mind as we age that we don't want to retire and just go lay on a beach somewhere. We want to retire, go lay on that beach, but bring a book with you, bring a crossword puzzle, learn a new skill. Now, in Okinawa, one of the things that they do out there 
for to stay in touch with other people is that they have create they've created these groups called MOEs. And a MOE is a group of people that get together for social and financial support. So an example of that would be, let's say there are 20 of us in the room. So the 20 of us get together monthly and we put $10 in the pot. And that first month I get the pot of money, it's $200 for me. And then the next week, it's the next, per the next month, the next person until 20 months later, it comes back to me again. Now, one of the groups that I read about in, this is the Okinawan program. It's a really, really great book that I highly recommend. And then a nice sequel to it is the Okinawan diet plan. Um, they talk about foods in Okinawa and they talk about their customs. But what I read about in there about the Moes is that there was one group of men, they were in their 80s and they went to kindergarten together. Can you imagine that? And they were still getting together in these Moes. And Moes are often people maybe have a Moe in the same, from, they're from the same family, or it might be people that they work with, or people socially that they might know. So they might belong to several Moes. Now, if you think of in our culture, what would constitute a Moe? Maybe it's some group that you, that you belong to. Uh, maybe it's a charitable group where you go and you volunteer. Or what I like to think about too, is what about baby showers or wedding showers? So when you have a baby shower, people get together socially to support the couple that had the baby. And same thing with the wedding, they get together to celebrate the wedding and then they give a gift. So they're giving social and financial support. So we are kind of doing it here, but we could, we could do better with it and get together with people and keep that as a goal to just stay with people, not become, become isolated. Now, number eight, the longevity factor eight is aim to be happy and cheerful. The Okinawans are known as a pretty upbeat group. They're known for having a high level of resilience, which is the ability to bounce back. And this is something that we can really learn. We can become more happy and cheerful from practicing different things. One of them is actually exercise. We mentioned that longevity factor before, but exercise can actually make you feel better. It has been shown in research to help to lift and improve depression, which is really, really nice. So uh, something to think about. Now, other things we can do to be happy and cheerful when feeling down help other, other people. One woman from Okinawa that's in Dan Buettner's Blue Zones books she said that when, that when she's feeling down, she helps other people. Now, this was a woman, her name was Marge Jetton, and when she was over 100 years of age, she was still volunteering. In fact, she took Dan Buettner for a ride in her Cadillac at, around Loma Linda, and one of the things they did is they dropped off magazines to the senior center, and she said, I'm going to drop these off for the old folks. Can you imagine? She was probably older than most of them, but what an upbeat attitude to have. Now, other things that we can do, random acts of kindness can make you feel good and can spread that kindness around. Maybe we pay for someone else's coffee in line, or maybe we cook for someone. Maybe we make something for someone. I've had wonderful people that have come to my classes and that have given me things that they've made, and I cherish these items. It's really been very special. Now, one of the things I found interesting is that research shows that as long as they're in fairly good health, people in their 70s are on average as happy and mentally healthy as people in their 20s. So just something to think about. We can look forward to aging. This is something to really think about and look forward to and not think about, oh, you know, aging is a negative thing. And in our culture, sometimes it gets perceived that way, but it can be a beautiful thing. In fact, in one of the longevity cultures, I believe it's Abkhazia, one of the things that's a compliment is to say, hey, you're looking old today. Can you imagine here if you said that to someone, you're looking old today? They would be really unhappy for a long time, but that's actually a compliment there because it shows that you're, you're showing wisdom, you're wise. And in Okinawa as well, the older generation, they're really, they're, they're celebrated. And one of the things that, that it, that I read in the Okinawan program is that the two authors and they're Bradley Wilcox um, and Craig Wilcox, they're um, doctors out of, out of Canada. When they went to study Okinawa, they were in one town and they saw there was a person being paraded around town. They were holding a pinwheel, they had an elaborate, elaborate garments on and they thought, oh, that must be someone famous. Well, actually they were just celebrating a birthday 
and 97 happens to be a popular year there for, for birthdays, like our 100 here. So they were celebrating a birthday, and the town was out to celebrate them. So it's a real lovely thing where we can celebrate our, our elders. Now, another thing I want to talk about that goes at that point of being happy and, and cheerful is having a purpose. Having a purpose is really important for longevity. In one of the areas, I believe Costa Rica, I read about a man, and his purpose was as an elder, as a senior that was uh, retired, and his purpose was just getting fresh bread from, from the local bakery for the family. But, you know, maybe your purpose is teaching other people, and maybe you haven't found your purpose yet, so maybe we can look for what that purpose might be. But it's really important to have a purpose. Maybe it's helping other people or volunteering or helping animals, but we can all have a purpose and that can really add years to, to our lives. Now, another thing that's a, a great longevity factor is minimizing your exposure to chemicals. And one way we can do this is by buying more organic and natural produce. That's a great way to limit that pesticide exposure. But also you want to think about what are you putting on your skin? Can you use more natural cosmetics and moisturizers? What are you cleaning your home with? Can we use more natural cleaning products? It's amazing what vinegar can do. So think about also when we're at home, when we are spraying various chemicals around, open a window. When you vacuum, open a window, get some fresh air circulating in that household. That's really a great way to get some of those chemicals out and get some fresh air in. And just talking about fresh air, one of the things I've noticed in the longevity regions is that some of them are very hilly regions. And I was just, when I was out in Loma Linda recently, someone that I met with out there mentioned that getting in nature is just really important for the people in Loma Linda, specifically the Seventh-day Adventists. So Loma Linda is known for having a high denomination of Seventh-day Adventists, and there have been studies on, on them showing that they live longer than regular Californians. And one of the things that they do is they connect with nature. Saturday is their day where they turn off the cell phones and where they go out. They do potluck dinners with other families. They go out in nature and they enjoy taking walks. And there's something about the hills and the mountains that was mentioned to me that's really therapeutic. And I see with this with I see this with other areas of longevity. Vilcabamba is very hilly and Hunza and Abkhazia are hilly as well. So maybe that's something we can think about. You know, Massachusetts, we have great places where we can go for hikes. Maybe it's the Blue Hills. Maybe it's out Wachusett Mountain. Um, maybe you want to go to New Hampshire and do some hiking. But connecting with nature is great. We have so many nature trails in our state. So just getting out on some trails, connecting with nature is really such a, a good thing for us. Now, another uh, longevity factor that was studied when they looked at Seventh-day Adventists, because I mentioned they were found to live longer, one key is that they don't smoke. Um, you don't see uh, alcohol as much, so they really limit their alcohol, their caffeine, they don't smoke, and they eat lots of vegetables, they eat nuts and seeds, and then spirituality is really big in their culture as well and most of them are eating a plant-based diet so it's something to think about you know we mentioned giving up meat before but maybe you want to limit that red meat in in the diet and you know move toward a vegetarian diet i'm not telling you to be to become a vegetarian so longevity factor number 10 is embrace spirituality and in okinawa something nice that they do there is when they get sick they see not only a medical doctor like we do here um, in the western part of the world, but they also see a shaman, which is a faith healer. And the shaman uses faith and suggestion to, to bring about good, good health. Now, let's move on and do our smoothie. So this, I like to think of it as a longevity smoothie. So what we're going to do here, and you can actually go on my website for this recipe, and this recipe um, will, is on my blog. I call it the Vegan Delight Smoothie. You don't have to be a vegan or strict vegetarian to eat it, but this smoothie is just a really yummy way to start your morning. So the first thing we're gonna do is put in 
a half cup of soy milk. Shake your soy milk. This is Trader Joe's. It's um, they use whole organic soybeans, so we'll do a half cup of this. And then we're going to do four ounces of firm tofu. So Trader Joe's has tofu. This is in the soya that's in many of the supermarkets that are around our state. Um, so I have, what I do is I tend to take a block of tofu and I cut it in four. So we'll put the tofu in there. And then we're going to do a tablespoon of the almond butter. Sometimes I do half a tablespoon, depends on how many calories I'm looking to eat that day or what, I, what else I ate the rest of the day. So we'll do that, that almond butter. And then we are going to do a half to one teaspoon of ground flax. We're also going to do a teaspoon of Hershey's cocoa. So this is unsweetened cocoa, okay? It's just cocoa. But when we add the fruit to it, that's when we get the sweetness. So I'm going to do a teaspoon of the cocoa. And then I'm going to do a teaspoon of flaxseed. This is, happens to be ground flax. You want to keep that in your refrigerator. And then we're going to do two strawberries. Now the, the fruit, you can add a little more or a little less. It doesn't have to be exactly according to the recipe. So we'll put these strawberries in. I happen to have three here. So I'm just going to toss in the third one. And then we're going to do a half cup or frozen cup of the, I'm sorry, a half uh, frozen banana. And I just wanted to show you, I happen to be using a fresh banana here, um, but with the banana, what I like to do is use half for a smoothie, and then you can use the other half, you can put that, so maybe you take a banana and you use it in your cereal or oatmeal, and then the other half you freeze to put in your smoothie. So I'm going to put about a half in here. It's a little bit of a mushy middle there, so I'm going to take a little bit off the other, take that off, a little bit off the other end. All right, and then from Trader Joe's, you have, these are un, they're unsweetened um, cherries, and it says dark sweet, but they're not adding any sugar to this. They're just naturally sweet. So what I tend to do is I might put my, um, get a little extra juice there, sorry. These have defrosted just a little bit. Um, so... I tend to fill up a cup with the, the strawberries, the blueberries, so I have sort of a whole cup of fruit. That's one way that I, that I do it. But again, the exact amounts don't really matter that much. These are Wyman's frozen blueberries that I'm using of Maine. Those are really delicious. So I'm going to put those in. And then the next thing that you would put in is your spinach. And just for the sake of time today, I'm not going to add, add that in, but you would add spinach in here as well. And I find with kale for this particular recipe, that's too strong. Sometimes when I run out of spinach, I use lettuce. So we're just going to close this up. And this happens to be a ninja, which I love. And what I do is I kind of watch as I'm... Um, I watch as I put the blender on because I don't want to over blend it and have it be too soupy. So I watch just until everything looks like it's initially blended. And then I like to eat it with a very tall spoon um, so I can eat it right out of this, right out of this uh, cup. All right, so we're going to get that going. So I'm watching it. And if you can see closely, you'll see some of the almond butter um, right here. Whoops, there we go. Nope. Sorry, right there. So I'm kind of looking for just that initial time where that's all kind of mixed in. You could see the color difference, um, whoops, right up here in this line. So I'm looking for that color difference just to go away so I'm not over, not over blending it. Almost. All right, I'll give one more little, how about one more? There we go. And 
That is your longevity vegan delight smoothie. So we're going to enjoy this. I'm going to take one spoonful and make sure it tastes okay. And remember, you're going to add spinach to this as well. Mmm, very delicious. Thank you everyone for watching the show today. I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Bye-bye.